Hello, I'm Lauren Corvubius. Welcome you to the Call from the Mountain Prophetic Insights. I really believe with all my heart we're living in a very unique time in history. I've always been a lover of studying history and I've looked at the world in the past and in the present. And I can say the history of our world that we're forming right now is a very strange time in history. And yet I know that with prophetic insight we can have an understanding at least what the kingdom of God is wanting to manifest in this day and what God is wanting to manifest through his kingdom. And so we need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church. And one of the things I feel I want to share with you today is about how important it is for us to sow seed. Now in last week's prophetic perspective, I was talking about the fact that with God for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. And I was talking about how important it is to know what season it is Using the illustration of where I live in Michigan, there's a time for planting, there's a time for growing it, time for harvest, etc. Now, when you think about the kingdom of God, you have to understand that our, our temperature and our climate is unique in itself. We have to apply these principles to it, but we also have to understand, well, what is the difference here? Because where I live, you don't sow seeds any time but in the spring, and you want to make sure you time it perfectly because you don't want to get stuck with some frost or late snow or whatever you're not going to have enough time to harvest what you're doing so you want to make sure it's early enough strange situation but as it pertains to the kingdom of god the bible teaches us the importance of the seed and how important it is that we're planters of the seed of god jesus said the kingdom of god is as a man who scattered seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow He himself doesn't know how, for the earth yields a crop by itself, first the blade, then the head, and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, for the harvest has come. Now, when we think about the seeds of the kingdom of God, we have to understand that when the Lord speaks, that's like a seed that comes into our heart when we're born again. And I truly believe that that seed wants to grow and form within us. That's why the Apostle Paul, writing to the church uh, of Galatia, said, I pray that Christ be formed in you. He was talking about that incorruptible seed of the living God that was birthed in them when they were born again. And yet it's also important that we would understand the power of the seeds that God gives us for sowing and understand that whenever we sow our seed, we have to understand that's a very important principle of the kingdom of God. And we don't always know how it's going to work, but we can be assured when you plant a seed, that seed has power within itself because it is the seed of the Word of God. I know I've been in the ministry now for over 45 years. We had a celebration on our 45th anniversary. Our church started by a seed. It was a seed of the Word of the Lord that that God spoke to me those many years ago. And I was a very young person when God started speaking to me, 23 years of age. But I began to plant the seeds that the Lord gave to me, and they began to sprout, they began to grow, and awesome things began to transpire over the years. And so looking back, I can say, God, thank you that I was willing to plant the seed by faith that you had given to me to plant. And then along the way, there's been many seeds, if you would, that I have planted as a part of our ministry. And of course, every time I'm preaching and teaching the Word of God, just like I'm to right now, I'm sowing the seeds of the kingdom of God and know full well that even sometimes I won't even see the results of these seeds, but the seed of God is sure. It's a mystery sometimes how it's gonna work. It might take a certain time, might take a certain season, but you can be sure when you sow the seed of God, the word of the Lord is gonna come to pass. Now, in this scripture, it talks about a threefold aspect of that, and I have uh, to share with you how important it is for us to know that, because I really share how important it is that we understand we're in a third day. God is a God of threefold things. And this seed talks about coming first as a blade, then the ear, and it's using an illustration of wheat, and then the full grain in the ear. We're in the season of God where the full grain in the ear is coming forth. But also we have to understand how important it is, no matter what season we know it is, we always have to be sowing seed for the future because God wants us to be always the seed sower and always thinking about the future. I often share the scripture in the book of Genesis chapter 3 that immediately after the fall, the Lord spoke basically a prophetic word and he told the woman that, well, the enemy's going to nip at her heel, but her seed is going to put Satan under their feet. 
that was a seed sown, if you would, when God spoke those words so many thousands of years ago. And uh, it took a long time for those seeds to manifest. And we know the seed of the woman was first of all Christ and how that he had defeated Satan through his death, burial, and resurrection. But I also believe the fullness of that right now is that we, the body of Christ, are going to be coming forth as the seed of God who's going to do what it says in the book of Revelation. We're going to overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. We're not going to hold on to our life, but we're going to trust in his life that he has put within us. He said, what shall we liken the kingdom of God to or what parable? Well, it's like the mustard seed, which is the smallest of all the seeds that one would plant. But when you plant it in your garden, it begins to grow and sometimes slowly. But in the end, it will become the greatest herb, the greatest plant that's in the garden. And I truly believe with all my heart that's what God says concerning the kingdom of God. I don't look for a defeated church in the future. I don't believe that Jesus is going to come and rescue people that are hiding behind the rocks. He's going to come for a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle. Why is that? Because Jesus Christ became the seed that was sown that produced the vine of Christ in the earth. And we are now branches on that vine. And the same is true for each and every one of us. When we understand the power of the sowing of the seed, we can be assured that it's going to come to pass. One of the scriptures that I wanted to share with you as well along that line is from Psalm 126. It says, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, that's the key, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You might be going through a very difficult time. It might seem like a time of disappointment. It might seem like a time where you're not getting any results. And God says, well, the results might take longer than you think, but more important than just looking for the results, make this a seed sowing town. Because you're in time of sadness and your time of weeping, you might hold back on your seed, but God says, as you're planting the seed now, it's going to bear a return in the future. And so we, the people of God, have to always be thinking about what is going to come. Sometimes we've been in a really good time. This is talking about a difficult time. And because we have everything we think we need, well, we're not sowing for the future. I think that's a sad commentary for the nation, the United States of America these days, because nobody's thinking about the future anymore. Everything is for right now. You can see it in our economic system, the money supply, and how they're managing money in the government. People are just spending. No one's thinking about the future, and so there's no thought that we're going to sow the seed for the future so that we get the future return. But instead, what can we get now, and how can we enjoy it now, and no thought for the future. We're living in very affluent times, and so whether you're one who's enjoying the affluence of the moment, or maybe you're in this time of weeping because you're looking at things and saying, I don't know what's going on, it doesn't matter what the season looks like because this is the kingdom of God, and in this kingdom, the most precious thing you can do is to sow seed because when you're sowing seed, you're putting something in the ground that's gonna have a return. And so that's what I was sharing about my testimony as a pastor. I'm so glad at my age that I can say I've sown a lot of seeds because guess what? I'm harvesting the blessing of those seeds. Uh, I'll be sharing with our congregation how important it is for us to realize that this happens over time. And in the coming year, I'll be celebrating what I call the 30th anniversary of my 40th birthday party. Uh, that sounds a little bit easier than saying the actual age. But the truth of the matter is, at my age, I can say because throughout all those years I was sowing seed, I now am reaping the rewards of that seed, seeing it in my family, seeing it in the church, seeing it in the people that over the years have received the seed that I've shared with them through preaching and teaching, and seeing that God is performing the word that he spoke to me many years ago. He talk, told me about a people that go on to maturity, and guess what? I'm seeing it happen. Why? Because I was willing to sow the seed, whether it looked like it was going to happen or it didn't look like it was happening. God wants you to know today that the power is in the seed. Don't think about just today. Think about tomorrow. Plant your seeds. Get your seeds from the Word of God. Get your seeds by having an ear to hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church so that you can sow the seeds that are going to guarantee 
you're going to have that future harvest. Well, thank you for listening to this program today. It's our joy to minister to you. If you're watching on YouTube, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to our channel or also push the like button. But also we have our Call from the Mountain website and on there we can communicate with you and share with you many of the messages that God has been speaking to us. This is a new day. This is a third day. Let him who have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is speaking to the church.